What's up, gang? All right, so it's 4.15 in the morning right now. Uh, we just got to our spot. Of course, there's no one here, so... But that's good. That was the goal anyways, was to be the first one here. But then when you show up and you're like, oh, I got here two hours early. Maybe no one else is even going to roll up until until after sunrise. So regardless, I got the spot set up. Now I'm just chilling in the back of the truck. It's actually pretty warm out here. It's like 28 degrees outside. Warm in the truck. It's not bad. A little bit of wind, which is good. So a little recap from yesterday. We got here at about noon. We got fishing. Um, it was slow. Everyone we talked to, they had uh, had a couple bites in the morning and then nothing by the time we got there. I lost one really, really nice fish. The first fish I hooked. Um, don't know how big it was. I don't even really want to think about it. I saw it pretty close, but usually for me out here, they look pretty big and then you get them in the net and they're even bigger. So that was a huge bummer. Um, wasn't sure if I was going to get a shot and add another fish. Ended up hooking another one about two hours later, landed it. Um, the guys next to us had a scale. It was 15.8 pounds. It weighed 17.8. Our net's about two pounds. And that was awesome. That was my biggest fish on the bobber yet. Um, so that fish was sweet. And then right after that, I caught a little summit, probably three, four pounds. Then... Right when it was getting dark, Nate showed up and I missed three fish like back to back to back right before it got too dark to see. So hoping that the morning bite is good. It usually is. Okay, here we are. We got 10 minutes till fishing time. We're all set. The rod's rigged. I'm going double leeches today. I got a black one and then kind of like a purplish brown one. Um, that black was what was killing it yesterday. Um, that's what I caught my fish on. That purple too, I caught one on that. So I got some some glow indicators here. It just kind of helps when it's dark like this. When there's a moon out, you can't see it. But when it's dark, moonless, they'll work for the first 30 minutes or so. And that's awesome because I've, I've caught so many fish doing that with these indicators. They're pretty great. Um, I just did it myself. I got some like 3M spray paint glow in the dark stuff and I just put like 20 coats on them um, so yeah stay tuned I don't know if I'll be able to show you any fish if we catch them since it's dark but I'll take some pictures with the flash at least and then we'll check in when the sun comes up Well, there was a fish in the net, first cast. Yeah, not bad at all. Not 
goes oh let's keep going hell yeah two casts two fish Right, I just barely switched to a balanced minnow, white and gray, and a black leech. Not sure which one he took. Um, haven't had any action since the sun came up. This is the first bobber down. Feels like a good fish. I was getting real big head shakes. He took the minnow. Oh, that's decent. Maybe 10. Yeah, he's decent. Yeah. It's probably about 10, I think. Yeah. Nice nut job. Woo! So let me kind of explain my casting process here. Um, mostly I'm doing roll casts, but I can also do overhead casts to get it out there quite a bit further. Um, wherever I'm at, I usually just take a look at my surroundings, notice any sharp rocks I can get caught on. This little groove right here has been a great little stripping basket to hold my line. So I'm gonna recast right now. I'll show you my roll cast and then my overhead cast. So basically, I'm just gonna start stripping in and I always do it slow because you might get a fish to take while on the retrieve. So just for demonstration purposes, I'll speed it up. And as you can see, I'm piling everything into this nice little hole right here. And this is the Rio switch chucker line. So it's got a shooting head on it, which is the white line. And then the running line, which is the green line, that little orange patch marks the transition between the two. So as soon as that's at your rod tip, you can lift it up. I'm gonna use one false cast to redirect. And then on this one, I'm gonna shoot it forward and let the line come out. So you can see I shot almost all my line and that's pretty good out there, pretty far. Um, that last fish was quite a bit further. So I'm gonna show you what to do to overhead cast. What's important to notice is I got wind coming in from my right, blowing into my right shoulder. 
So I don't want to be casting over my right side or else my line will just blow into me. So on this one, it's not a very strong wind, so I'm basically just going to go right over my head. If it was a strong wind, I'd come over my left shoulder, but I don't need to do that. And I'm going to have more control and more accuracy if I go right over my head. So again, I'm going to pile my line into this little groove here. Always check your back cast when you do this. I'm pretty clear behind me, but I'm still going to stop my rod tip right at about 12 o'clock on my back cast. Okay, same procedure as before, although this time I like to leave a little bit more line out of the tip. So I'm going to do one false cast to redirect. Then I'm going to pick it right up and then shoot it forward. So I stopped when it was high, waited for that line to straighten out, and then I used both hands on the two-handed rod with the reel like the fulcrum to just shoot it forward. I also, when I get a good cast like that and I see my flies land out past my indicator, I don't pull all the slack out right away because as those flies sink, it's going to start pulling the indicator and the line towards where those flies are. So that's actually going to get my indicator out there a little bit further. As soon as I see that stop going, then I'll pull in just until my indicator moves slightly just to know I'm tight with it. And when you're setting with a switch rod and you have that much line out and the fish are this big, you have to set as hard as you can. So I got my fingers locked down on the line. If anything hits that, I just have to raise it as fast as I can to the side of my head. I've heard people say like you're answering the phone, like an old phone that sits on a desk. So you probably can't see this, but there's a big belly that's starting to form in my line. The current's blowing my line faster than it's blowing the indicator and the flies. So even though I'm technically tight to my bobber, like if I strip, it moves. If I set, there's gonna be about, I don't know, maybe six, six feet or so of slack once that line is up off the water. So it's important in this situation to mend kind of tough to mend with these lines because you just have the thin running line but basically what I do is I strip till that indicator is moving then I grab the rod with both hands and kind of flick it over to the side like that a lot of the time you'll get strikes right after you mend this puts a little bit of action on the fly Nice. 